Hi, let's make the perfect palette today with this and the essential iced coffee because it is freakingly hot in DC. Let's go on an art adventure. Okay, if you do not know this, it is the portable painter, which you must say in a fake French accent apparently. <laughs> Sorry to anyone French out there watching. And it started as a Kickstarter, I believe, because there was a watercolorist who could not find a really great kind of outdoor portable palette to take on the go with them. So what's so cool about this portable painter is not only the case, which unfolds and is a mess because I have one single color in there, but you can also, hmm, how do I remember how to do this? Because I haven't done it forever. You can attach things to the side. They slide in. I remember now. I can do stuff. Okay, so <laughs> you can slide these side contraptions on and then it can balance on your legs, sit on the ground, balance on your arm or something if you want to, like that, I don't know, whatever you want to do. You can take it on the go with you. These fill up with water and you can just start painting and getting at it. So, I'm just going to remove all of those bits and focus on these lovelies, which are all of these empty little half pans that I want to fill up and make the perfect palette. I've already gotten to a good start, ironically with the color that I don't tend to put into palettes that much anymore, or focus on palettes anymore which is green, but this is like the best green ever. It is Shadow Green by Holbein. I use this color insanely often, so much for so much stuff. It, hev it featured heavily in my Dark Fairy Tale Mermaid origin story, which I'll put a link up to pink in the corner so you can go check it out. Or maybe when I flip this around, it's around there, whatever. It's in a top corner somewhere. And I use it for shadow work, for vegetation, paintings, like foliage, like all sorts of stuff all the time. Oh, you also get this um, portable brush in the portable painter as well. So anyway, it's all still a bit of a mess from when I did my mermaid painting because I like to save paint just in case I'm going to use it again. But that's a lot of chatting. Let's get into colors. First up, I want yellow. So I am a paint nerd and I put all of my different um, tube paints into these little acrylic containers and they form a little tower that makes me look, makes me happy every time I look at it. So I have to choose what colors to put into it. And I just received, did that go out of focus? Okay, I just received, <laughs> let's, let's lock in the focus, lock it in. Um, I just received Hansa Yellow Deep, which was a fantastic color, a Daniel Smith color. And I also love really, really bright yellow too. So I have this Holbein permanent yellow, which is tempting. But I also have Lemon Yellow from Schmincke. I think they're basically the same. I found out that they're both such great quality that you can't really tell that much of a difference. I would probably use my lemon yellow, but I've used it up from this one. So I guess I'm going to go with the Schmincke one. Then I've got Hansi Yellow Deep. Hmm. Do I want a yellow ochre? I probably do. Oh my gosh, I've got shadow green in here. Why is there shadow green in the yellow? I don't know. Oh, there's a new Gamboge there. That's the one that I just received in Art Snacks. So, I'm getting really confused. Let's put green away. Okay, this new Gamboge was really cool. So, I think I'll go with that. Maybe yellow ochre. Is there a better choice in here? Why do I have so many insane amounts of yellows? When I first started watercoloring, I lived in Japan and I found the entire Holbein set of these little five millimeter tubes for like $70 or something or around that because it's, you know, Japanese money. So it's, you know, Ropyakuen or something. Um, but 
in English, it's like, uh, it was something like $70 US. And, and I just realized I forgot how to speak Japanese. So I wanted to say, <laughs> what would I want to say? Something like, Hasen. Hasen yen. Yeah. Something like 80 yen. Sorry, 8,000 yen. Which is, oh man, trying to do numbers in Japanese and English is so confusing. So let's just say it was like $70 US <laughs> for, oh gosh, like 80 tubes of this stuff. So I got like the whole set. Anyway, let's put that aside. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm going to have an orange as well. Maybe. Let's go to reds. Am I, in a weird, in, am I in a weird mood today? Yes, because it is freakishly hot. I only just recently woke up and I'm still having coffee kick in. And I don't know, I just really feel like doing art stuff today. And hopefully this audio actually works because my air conditioning is blasting away. Okay, well, I think we have to include that quinacridone rose that I just received. There's a lot of colors already. Permanent alizarin crimson. I always hear painters using alizarin crimson, so I feel like I'm compelled to use alizarin crimson. Pyro red looks very much like a super red. I got that in a starter Daniel Smith set, I believe. Hmm. Very tempted to have like a purpley one. I don't know if this is actually going to be the best palette ever because I'm just like, they all look great. I want that one. I want that one. Anyway, let's put these. <laughs> let's get this aside so you can keep track of what I'm doing so far or I can try to keep track of what I'm doing. I'm going to have to cull, I'm guessing. Let's go to what comes after red. Um, let's see. Actually, often I go like these days, reds first. Like the rainbow, Roy G, right? Like red, orange, yellow, Roy G, green, blue, indigo, and violet. That's how I often set up my palettes these days. So I'm probably going to go with that approach. And that means so Roy G, green. I've got the green that I want. I'll mix other greens, I would say. Probably. Let's just have a quick look at greens. <gasps> Oh my gosh, I forgot my M grams, which are huge, and I've put them separately, and I love, love, love this permanent pale green that I got in Art Snacks, and it's the reason why I ended up going and buying um, one of the starter sets of M gram. You can get some really cheap sets of like five of these big boys of 15 mils for like 25 to 35 dollars US on US Amazon. So that's what I did. Um, hmm, do I have a better red? Maybe cadmium red is the one that I want to go with. I also really have loved their permanent alizarin crimson better than the Holbein one, I think. So, you're gone, you're out. Oh, I also really love this turquoise. So, that's going to be staying, I think. Oh, and this purple. Okay. There, there's a lot going on there. Oh man, their bismuth yellow is maybe the, the yellow that I want more than anything. Uh, uh, uh. Tough choice. Well, I've got more of this one, so maybe I should do this one. Okay, so suddenly it's just like M. Graham takes the field. Seriously though, M. Graham paints have blown my mind. They're stinky little guys, but they're amazing. Let's see. The only problem is I wanted this as an on-the-go palette and they stay so wet for so long that I'm worried that they'll just like move around a lot in the, the palette but I guess it's going to be locked pretty firmly into place. So let's cross that bridge when I come to it. Next! Um, am I up to blues? Oh, there were greens. Um, I don't think I want any more greens. Yeah. Yeah. I also have one separate section of other paints, which are Prima Tex, which are all like, oh, and golds and silvers and stuff. 
which are all kind of like sparkly and made from minerals and things like that. But I'm not going to include them in this palette. So there. Why did I show you them? Who knows? And let's go to blues. Okay, I'm a super huge fan of indigo, but I think I'm out of it. I actually have reached the point after years of painting that I have to go and buy some new tubes, I'm guessing. Um, peacock blue was really cool too. I do want some sort of blue, probably an ultramarine. Oh, there it is! So that I can mix like greys and things like that. Well, this is the most full one that I have. I do really want some sort of indigo. Prussian blue is also beautiful because, well, basically look at all the empty ones and I love them. Okay, so let's see. Neutrals. How many spots do I have? 12? And I think I've run out of eight. Two, four, six, twelve. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. No, I have to do culling. Okay. Um, burnt sienna. Very likely. Hematite genuine. What are you doing in there? You should be in the one with Primatech. Oh, and Peyton's grey. Sepia is also beautiful. Burnt Sienna Light, and which one is it? Burnt, just Burnt Sienna. Oh, tricky choices. Is this even on camera? Sorry if it's not. What's this one? Oh, an extra tube of Payne's Grey. I don't know how I got that, but let's use that up if I'm going to. Okay, uh, we're going to have to cull. It is a difficult time for us all, but we'll get through this. Okay, um, how about I ditch the cadmium red and go with a pyro red. I don't think I really need the permanent yellow orange if I got the new gamboge. Neutrals go over here. So how are we doing now? Two, four, six, eight, ten. Actually, I only have 11 spots because I already have one filled, don't I? So three reds, two yellows. Do I want three yellows? At least two of the primaries each, right? So I've got two yellows and two blues. Which I can probably get away with. I've got two greens somehow, even though I talked about not needing green anymore. The shadow green and this permanent pale green is just so beautiful. Which one of these would I rather? I guess I'll try the sminker one. I only have like two tubes of sminker and one was the lemon yellow and one was this one. So let's go with sminker. And I have some half pans of sminker, but not too many tubes. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Ooh, it's getting close. Um, if I count the yellow ochre as a yellow, that gives me kind of another yellow-ish. And then if I count the purple as a blue-ish, it gives me kind of three blues. I have to cull something else and I don't want to. This is terrifying to me. Maybe I don't need Payne's Grey. So I can just mix some sort of grey. And hopefully this ultramarine, I should test them out, but I'm not going to. Hopefully this ultramarine and burnt sienna can do a good grey together. And if not, I'll just mix a whole bunch of different colours in until I get there. Okay, I'm going to go with that, and worst comes to worst, I swap out a colour later on. So, let's find a way to get a swatch card into this. Boop. Okay, looks like this Grumbucker sampler is like the perfect size-ish. Let's roughly cut that and measure. Actually, let's measure first. So, I need 12 boxes. So let's just go with a centimeter each. So when I'm like concentrating, I find it really hard to talk. 
don't know what to say at the moment other than I'm measuring out boxes so that I can make a swatch card and write swatch information onto it, which I used to be really careful about always doing, and these days I've noticed that I just start using supplies and then I forget what they are in palettes because I didn't do a swatch card. So don't be like me, take the time to make swatch cards. I mean, I'm doing one right now, aren't I? But I swear I have not been doing them for a lot of palettes lately. And I think because this is going to be a small swatch card, I'm going to have to do the painting on one side and then write on the back what the paint color and brand is. And that's super important to include as well, especially if you're like me and you now are trying to Pokemon all of the different watercolors from all the different sets. You want to know, you know, if it says New Gamboge, which New Gamboge is it? Is it like Holbein, Sminka, and Graham? Where's it coming from? That is important stuff. Okay, that's not really so straight, but whatever, it is what it is. It's a swatch card, it doesn't really matter that much. Four and a half, what's that? Two and a, in the middle bit, uh, two and something. Great math, I actually used to teach middle school math, so sorry to all of my students that are watching, you should be more precise. In some situations, you don't really need to be. Oh, what have I done? I'm such a doofus. I've just realized <laughs> I needed six centimeters. <laughs> okay, so each box is going to be two, <laughs> two centimeters wide. <laughs> That's what I said where I can't concentrate and talk at the same time. <laughs> as soon as I stopped talking and looked at it, I realized. So I only need every second line, which means that I'll have actually a good amount of swatching space. Let me erase those. I feel so embarrassed, but I'll probably keep this in instead of editing it out. Eraser, where are you? Okay, this what this uh, Tombow knock is wonderful. I've got lots of Tombow erasers. Uh, let's see some. Okay, so these are some of the most common Tombow erasers. So many people these days seem to have this tiny round one, which is useful, but this slightly bigger round one, which is a 3.8 millimeter, I actually am finding I use more and more, and I really love this size the most. And then there's the chisel tip one, which is, they're all a bit dirty, sorry, but it's kind of a square shaped one. I really love this one as well. So you can get all sorts of different fine erasers this day, these days, which is great. And these are all refillable, although I'm really worried because I've not seen the square one outside of Japan. So I'm not sure if I can get refills easily. Okay, why was I showing that? Oh, yeah, I need to, <laughs> I need to erase every second one of these. Because I am a little silly. Oh, man, I just... Straight away, erase the wrong line. Seriously, could I just try to focus a little bit? Okay, let's try again. I do not need this line. Now that would be 12 boxes. Let's get this cut out. Okay, now my secret weapon is, although it's just a swatch card and I've said it's not that important, I happen to have da -ding, the Kado Maru Pro. Now, Maru means circle, Kado, is it corner or something? I'm not sure, yeah, I think so. Um, so, oh, from Japanese. So I want, 
I think small corners. It gives you small, medium, and large options. You just place your piece of paper into the cutter and press down. And look at that, you get a beautiful rounded corner, which makes your stuff look much more pretty. Okay, we have a swatch chart. Now, I'm going to make a mess, I can tell, so I need a mat to paint on and to write on. Okay, let's see. So my camera just stopped, but I just did the same on the back, and I'm just going to write down the colors and the brand that they come from. Many people also put pigment numbers, which should be if it's a fine watercolor written there. So for example, pyro red is PR254 if and also light fastness and stuff like that. I'm not going to worry about, well, maybe I'll write pigment numbers this time. And usually it's best if it's a single pigment number. So that's going to be better for mixing and things like that. So that's why you might want to care. I did not choose based on pigment numbers, but it looks like I've, by luck, gotten a bunch that are single pigment. Probably because single, single pigments end up with better effects, and then I've gotten to really love those colors, and so I've just been naturally drawn to them. I don't know, I'm talking too much, so I'm just going to write these down and I'll time lapse that. Okay, now we're up to the fun part where we actually get to start pouring some paints and then do the swatching. So I'm going to work from right to left because I am left-handed. If you're right-handed, I would recommend going in the opposite direction. And probably straight away you can tell just how sticky and gooey the M. Graham paints are. They also weirdly smell like swamp water for some reason that I'm not sure of, but that's just what happens with these paints. And they take a long time to dry once wet. So I'm not sure how much I'll take this palette on the go, but I paint from these sorts of palettes even at home. So I'm gonna still be using, so I'm gonna still be using this palette a lot anyway. And I use lots of yellow, so let's get that pretty big and full, but I don't want to risk overflow, so that's enough for now. And I need turquoise down here. I've already obviously got the shadow green and all the mess that goes along with it. If you can see any shininess or silver, it's because I added a medium into it when I did my mermaid painting, which is this, the Holbein Iridescent Medium. In Japan, it cost around $9 US, so sen en, like a thousand yen in Japanese money. But then I got it on discount for like, what, like $8.50, $8, I don't know, something like that. And where was I? Turquoise. So anyway, that explains why that's all shiny. This is such a lovely color. To be honest, I think as soon as you make a palette, you're going to want to have different colors and a different palette. And also, to be honest, I would choose some colors that 
I would have chosen to include some colors here that I don't own tubes of or that have run out but I'm not going to just go out and buy a whole bunch of new paints when I have all these new all these paints that work just fine for the moment unless I reach a point where <clears throat> unless I reach a point where I'm desperate to do a specific painting and I don't have the color that I need but I doubt that's going to happen anytime soon because I have all these wonderful colors so I'm just going to suck it up and use the beautiful ones that I have rather than pine or go out and consume for ones that I don't have, if that makes sense. Basically, I want to use what I've got. That's a long-winded way to say that. Ultramarine blue. It's useful if you've written everything down and it's all lined up and you are able to double check everything that you go so that it's all in the right place. You can move half pans around, but for some reason, even though this is meant to be the perfect portable painter, my half pans are pretty stuck in here. Uh, from memory, I think it doesn't actually come with half pans, so I bought these half pans and maybe they're just a little bit too large. I don't know. Whatever, they fit, so I was happy. New Gambridge Quinn Rose. I'm sure I'm going to make a mistake while I'm chatting here. So this guy is the new exciting explosive color that I got in the recent art snacks, the June art snacks. And although I've often watched people paint with quinacridone colors, um, I've never actually owned one. I think maybe they're more expensive than normal, I'm not sure. It's only series two. I have no idea why I don't have them. Maybe they just don't come in starter sets or whatever, but the quinacridone colors are amazing and they're explosive colors and also light fast due to their incredible chemistry. From memory, the history of it is that they were used for like car manufacturing and the outside paint jobs on the body of the cars. Maybe I'm getting it mixed up, but certainly it's been something that's come around through chemistry. I know that bit. And then they've later been applied to like watercolors or something in recent decades, uh, maybe like the last hundred years or so, maybe less. So historically, they're not colors that you'd see in old-timey watercolors. Not that you see that many old-timey watercolors because they used to use like gouache or oil paints or tempera is what they used to call it. But it's basically kind of like watercolors with egg whites, I think, in it. Please don't trust my history as good knowledge. My... My training is in science. Science stuff I know pretty well, but for art stuff, it's just kind of stuff that I pick up on the fly or vaguely pay attention to and maybe don't memorize. Red. Oh man, that's a strong, strong red. That's where it's at for the red. I have a feeling already that maybe these two are pretty similar and I'll probably want to go for the Quinn Rose a lot, but we'll see when we swatch. Man, that one's so fluid. Same for this bismuth yellow. And then finally, we have the burnt sienna. Now hopefully the ultramar ultramarine and the burnt sienna make a good gray together because I did not include a Payne's gray. Okay, so that is my perfect palette as of July 2019. Let's swatch them out. Okay. You want two containers of water. One for dirty water, one for rinsing to get a clean brush again. I put them a little bit away from where I'm working, but I just wanted to show you that. And I'm doing flat washes, so let's get a flat brush somewhere. There's a flat brush. Here we go. I'm going to use a 
Museum Emerald for flat. I received this one in an Art Snacks box. It was actually the second time I bought this box. Um, and I got different brushes each time, which is cool. They had a Valentine's Day special thing where you could get boxes for $10. So they were total bargains. I'll put a link card thing up if I remember. Anyway, let's swatch. So it can be good to add some water to each of these. And then let's dive in. I might come back and add a little bit more once they've had a chance to dry. Oh, also I use a cloth while I'm painting and I dry off my brush as I go. And I usually just sit that on like my lap. Sometimes it's on my desk. This is the beautiful shadow green. So I use it for so many things, not just foliage, but shadows, even like on portraits, shadow areas, mixing it in with the other colors, all sorts of things. I just super love that color. Bismuth yellow. This is an M. Graham one. The shadow green was Holbein. Oh yeah, that's a nice yellow. I was very, very tempted to use a lemon yellow, but I think to my eye, bismuth yellow and lemon yellow are very, very, very similar. What's next? We've got turquoise. This one is an M. Graham. Super gooey. There's some explosive turquoise color action. Too much, I think. It is a powerful blue. But I like me some powerful color. I really have woken up in an odd mood today. New gamboge. Oh no, I didn't double, triple check my brush. Or I wiped on a dirty spot, I don't know. But that was silly of me. Anyway, we can work around that. It's just a swatch chart. It's okay. Plus I'm pretty familiar what, with what a new gambo should look like. Ultramarine blue. Is this a Daniel Smith one? Yeah. So ultramarine blue is known for granulating. And many people include another similar blue, like cobalt blue, into their watercolor palettes because then that won't granulate and you have a choice between them. But I'm happy with this. Happy to have some granulating. Quinn Rose, let's get ready for some explosive color. Such a vibrant pinkish red. Really lovely. And you only need such a little amount to have it explode, this Quinn Rose. Just amazing. To me anyway. I also think that the mineral violet is pretty intense as well. Same for turquoise actually. I've chosen, and um, actually the pale green. Okay, I've chosen lots of explosive colors, but I like that you can mix them and dull them down easily, or you can have explosive color if that's what you want. Permanent Alizarin Crimson. So they are quite different. The Queen Rose and the Permanent Alizarin Crimson. So that's good news. Thought I only picked up a little, but clearly I must have picked up a lot there. So let's try to wipe that back. It's a good idea normally to do your swatch on the paper that you actually paint with, but this is it Grumbucker Sampler or whatever that I got in Art Snacks? It was just the right size for this and it's not really the best quality paper. It's going to be enough for me to get an idea of the colours though. And I've used all of them enough to, to know what they'll look like on paper I actually like. But if you're not used to painting much when you make your palette, definitely make it the swatch chart on the paper that you want to use and that paper that you use should be a cotton paper 100% cotton paper not a cellulose paper and so the easiest one to find in the 
the US usually, but it's expensive, is archers. Um, most people would probably use the cold press one, but the hot press is great too, and also really, really great if you like to do mixed media or color, especially color pencil work. You want the hot press one for that. But um, there's all sorts of good ones now, and I recently got the, the Blick Studio um, cotton watercolor paper, and I think it's great quality. It's not the best best, but it's great, and it's like half the price of Archer's, so I've really enjoyed using it, and I've even done commission work on it, so I think it's a, it is like 90% closest to best quality. My favorite one is actually one that is pretty easy to get in Japan, but I don't see it outside of Japan. Sometimes I find it online. It's called um, Muse Lamplight 100% cotton paper. So I would use that if I had the choice most of the time. It's a very unusual sort of paper. It's kind of thirsty and sucks up the paint and you have to work in many, many, many layers. So if you are happy to invest a lot of time to get great results, then that would be the one for you. But if you want faster results and you don't mind about price, I would go, oh, there's so much paint there. I would go with the arches. I didn't mean to put so much on. Just really stuck in. Was it a M. Graham? It's a Daniel Smith. Very sticky fluid one. You know, I didn't mean to overfill these, but I've clearly overfilled some of them. <laughs> I can see now at an angle. So hopefully I can get the lid to close and then still open again in the future. And I want to try to dial back that pile of red on the edge to see what it looks like more transparent. But it is a strong red, that's for sure. The one downside of mixing brands together is the paints respond differently to how wet the brush is or how much force you put onto the paint. They're also still really wet and straight out of the tube, so maybe once they dry a bit that will become a little bit more even. But at the moment I'm finding real extreme differences, like is this one Schmincke? I think so. Yeah, this one is Schmincke. And although it wets very easily, I'm still having to put the brush in with much more force than with the Pyro Red from Daniel Smith. Okay, so I want to go back and put a second layer, which is a stronger layer on one side. And I'll just time lapse that. And then this video is done. I have a new palette. Okay, so here we have my finished washes. Uh, some of them are a little bit damp still, and I think I, there was some cross-contamination of color a little bit despite trying to rinse them in two jars, or my brush in two jars the best that I could. This is also not the best paper, but I've got a good enough idea to be able to see what sort of colors I'm gonna be able to get and what I'll be able to paint. And I'm really happy with the color selection that I've gotten. It ends up that I've got kind of three reds, if you count yellow ochre, three yellows, a couple of blues, a couple of greens, and a violet and a burnt sienna for mixing grays. And this is what, <laughs> it's a messy looking palette, but this is what the final palette looks like at the moment while it's still drying up. And I hope I'm going to sometime soon film painting a new painting with these colors and see what I can create. So thank you guys so much for watching this art adventure. And as always, create more and consume less. And I'll see you guys soon for another art adventure. Take care.